glorify your holy name in Jesus' wonderful name. We give you praise, glory, and honor that is due to your name. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Oh, what a wonderful time. What a wonderful moment once again that we have come in your sanctuary, that once again we have come before your throne of grace. Uh, we just want to just say thank you to the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, we thank you that once again you have given us this power, you have given us this time that, Father, we may minister your word unto your people. You say it in your way that you will not leave us alone, but you will send us the comforter. You will send us the Holy Spirit. You will comfort us and you will teach us in the mighty name of Jesus. Now, Jehovah God, we thank you for the spirit of the living God that he has come upon us. You say you will receive power. When we receive the Holy Spirit, we have received power. That's why, Father, we are grateful that that power has come before us and that it has rested upon us in the powerful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you. We bless you. In Jesus' wonderful name, we pray. Hallelujah. 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 It is a wonderful day. It is a month of November, a month that we know that there are only two months more left into a new season, into a new year. But we are grateful that God has given us that time in this season of experiencing God's faithfulness. We are still experiencing God, God's faithfulness. Even in these two months, God is able to perform miracles. God is able to perform that thing that you desire in your life. That's why he is a God of faithfulness. We just want to thank him in this month of, month of November that we have entered into. I, I am expecting great things in this month, this month of November. You know, when there are just two days more, I mean, two months more to go, or one month more to go into December, and two months more to go into January, we, are, we know that God will perform that miracle for you and for me. Right now, I just want to appreciate each and every one of you watching wherever you may be watching from. May God bless you in this day. May God bless you in these two remaining months in the mighty name of Jesus. Uh, before I proceed, I just want to honor the great servant of God, my father, Dr. Bishop Mono, and my mom, uh, Pastor Tina Mono. I appreciate you, mom and dad. It's always an honor to serve under you. Uh, what grace you carry, what anointing you carry in your lives. It is just an honor to just say thank you once again that I can stand before God's people and your people and before your altar to minister the word of God to your people. I am grateful and I'm, I just want to say thank you so much. I'm greatly humbled once again to stand before you and before God's people. And I also want to just acknowledge uh, my brothers, Pastor David, um, Pastor Emmanuel, Pastor Ndawa, and our wives. I'm uh, not forgetting my beautiful wife always. I love her because I look smart because of her. She irons, she washes for me. Hallelujah. I look smart because of her. Um, just um, as I start the word, this is the message that I have entitled, Replacing Your Fears with Faith. Replacing your fears with faith. Um, the first scripture, the anchor scripture that I'm going to read, uh, is this, the book that we all have been reading in this season, uh, First Corinthians, uh, First Corinthians, chapter one, First Corinthians chapter one, and verse number nine. First Corinthians. Chapter 1 and verse 9. A very familiar scripture that we've been reading throughout this year. Um, I'll read from the I'll read from the King James Version or the New King James Version. First Corinthians, First Corinthians chapter 1 and verse number 9. First Corinthians chapter 1 and verse number 9. The Bible reads, God is faithful by whom you were called unto the fellowship of his son, 
Jesus Christ our Lord. Hallelujah. This is a powerful scripture. God is faithful. That's the first thing. If, if it's your Bible, just underline God is faithful. And then the Bible says, by whom you were called. You were called. You and me were called. Underline you were called into the fellowship. Underline the word fellowship with his son. Underline his son. Our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. The message is very simple and straightforward. Replacing your fears with faith. Hallelujah. Blessing your fears with faith. I'll go to a very familiar scripture in the Bible, the book of Luke chapter 1. I'll read first from the message Bible. Luke chapter 1, verse 29 to 34. Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 1. The book of Luke chapter 1. The story of Mary. Luke chapter 1 verse 29. Verse 29 to 34. The Bible reads, Mary, she says, I'll, 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 I'll read that again. She was thoroughly shaken, wondering what was behind a greeting like that. But the angel assured her, Mary, you have nothing to fear. God has a surprise for you. You will become pregnant and give birth to a son and call him named Jesus. He will be great. Be called son of the most high. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. He will rule Jacob's house forever. No end forever to his kingdom. Mary said to the angel, but how have I never slept with a man? Hallelujah. You can see that Mary was shaken. From just this scripture, you can see that Mary was shaken. Mary had fear on her. In this time that we are going through, we are going through these pandemics, we are going through inadequacy. We are going through confusion. Many things are happening. People are losing jobs. People, things are increasing. But fuel prices are going up, but salaries are not going up. You might be wondering how am I going to get married when people are no longer working, people are losing jobs. But the Bible says God is faithful. God is faithful. God is a faithful God. We need to trust on God because we cannot trust in man. We can only trust in God because God he is, he, he is the one who is able to remove us from this spirit of fear. Many of us right now, we are going through inadequacy. We are going through confusion. We are going through fear. Am I going to, how am I going to survive? How am I going to live? How am I going to pay rent? How am I going to pay school fees? We are going through a lot of things. We are being told that for us to travel, you need this and that. But don't fear because God is faithful. God is faithful. God to God to see us through. He could make a way in the wilderness for the children of God. If we could make a way for the children of Israel to cross the Red Sea, who are you, me and me, to fear? We have we don't need to fear anything because God is with us. Hallelujah! God is with us. God is with us. I'm going to just give you four things that we see that is happening in this time that we relate to this scripture of Luke chapter 1, verse 29 to 34. The first thing that we see is that Mary 
firstly feared. She was so scared. She became scared when the angel appeared to her. She was so scared. She was confused. Inadequacy. Inadequacy. She was so scared. She was so fearful. But the angel of the Lord assured her and said, Mary, do not be afraid. My brother, my sister, do not be afraid. Whatever you are going through at this time, at this moment, do not be afraid. Our Father always says, if they are retrenching, you will not be part and parcel of those that are being retrenched. I love my Father because whatever he has taught us, we have believed to say, this is a season to experience God's faithfulness. If the people can buy cars in this time of the pandemic where people are losing jobs, if people can buy houses in this time where people are losing jobs, where people are not getting paid enough, who are you not to receive that blessing that God has granted unto us? The Bible says Mary was fearful. She was so scared, but she was assured. Do not be afraid. Mary, do not be afraid. We see Joseph. <laughs> she, but you know the story. Mary was, was engaged to Joseph to get married. But they were not yet married. You see, now the angel also appeared to Joseph. Joseph was now more scared than Mary herself. He, he, he was saying to himself, they, they are going to reject me. They are going to disapprove of me. What this manner of thing has happened unto my fiancé. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'll base all my scriptures from NLT, the book of the Bible in NLT, the New Living Translation. Let's go to the book of Matthew, chapter 1. Matthew, chapter 1. Matthew, chapter 1, verse 18 to 20. Matthew, chapter 1, verse 18 to 20. Matthew, chapter 1, verse 18 to 20. I'll read. This is how Jesus, the Messiah, was born. His mother, Mary, was engaged to be married to Joseph. But before the marriage took place, while she was still a virgin, she became pregnant through the power of the Holy Spirit. Joseph, her fiancé, was a good man and did not want to disgrace her publicly. So he decided to break the engagement quietly. Verse 20. As he considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. Joseph, son of David, the angel said, Do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child within her was conceived by the Holy Spirit. The power of the Holy Spirit rested upon Mary. The angel assured Mary not to be afraid. But the angel also appeared unto Joseph to say, Joseph, do not be afraid. Take Mary as your wife. <laughs> oh, this is powerful. This is powerful. Joseph was, was afraid to be rejected by people. That how can it be that the fiance is pregnant? But they did not sleep together. Imagine in this time, you get pregnant, you are serving in the house of God. How people will look at you. And the fiancé that they announce is not the owner of the pregnancy. God is faithful. People, I assure you, God is faithful. There is only one faithful God. He is the Lord God Almighty. He is the Lord himself. The Alpha and the Omega. The mighty one of Israel. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We
We look at also Joseph as he was afraid. Now he's been told to say, do not be afraid. So we look at the fears that they encountered. Who else encountered this fear? We look at the shepherds. The shepherds were in the bush. They were busy looking after the animals. In the book of Luke, chapter 2, verse 8 to 10, we can quickly go there. Luke chapter 8, Luke chapter 2, verse 8 to 10. Luke chapter 2, verse 8 to 10. I'll read quickly. That night, there were shepherds staying in the fields nearby, guarding their flocks of sheep. Suddenly, an angel of the Lord appeared among them, and the radiance of the Lord's glory surrounded them. They were terrified. They were terrified. They were so scared. They were so scared because of the radiance, because of the anointing, because of the glory of God that appeared through the angel of God. They were so scared. They were so scared. They were so scared. But the angel, the angel reassured them, do not be afraid, he said. I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all people. God is about to bring good news to you, my brother, my sister, wherever you may be, whatever you are encountering, whatever you are going through at this moment. You Maybe you have lost your brother, maybe you have lost your sister. God forbid, in this time, in these two months that are remaining, you will not lose any member of your family. I decree and declare in the name of Jesus Christ that the Lord is faithful. God is faithful. I speak the blood of Jesus upon your doorsteps. I speak the blood of Jesus upon your entrances of your homes. The blood of Jesus upon your cars. The blood of Jesus upon your workplaces. In the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, Rabbi Shaka Zikapu. Mante Zikebe. The shepherds were afraid. They were afraid. They were afraid. <laughs> Who else was afraid in this time? As, as we will we will see how God is faithful and how we can replace our fears with faith. God is mighty, God is awesome. I love my father the way that he has taught me. I love the men of God that I work with because we are men of faith. We are never intimidated by anything. I, I remember I preached one message. When you see so many challenges in your life, you must know that there's a breakthrough that is coming in your life. I see a breakthrough, my sister, upon your life. I see a breakthrough upon you, my brother. Wherever you are watching me from, I do not care who said you shall not conceive. I do not care who said you shall not get a job because God is faithful. He will never leave you nor forsake you. If God was with Elijah, he did not leave Elijah. He did not leave the Shunammite woman. He did not leave the widow woman alone. God is faithful. May the power of God that rested upon Ezekiel rest upon you. Because today, the spirit of death is cancelled in your life in the name of Jesus. Because I know that God is faithful. And I live a fearless life. I am replacing every spirit of fear with faith. Makaziko barra zikipa manto zikariba shata. The other person that we can see that was terrified, who was scared that he will lose his control, as being a king, as being a king. Herod, the book of we can quickly go to the book of. The book of Matthew, King Herod, Matthew chapter 2. Matthew chapter 2. Matthew chapter 2. Matthew chapter 2, verse 2 and 3. King Herod was afraid that he would lose control. He was a king. But you, if you read the whole story from the beginning, you have an understanding. But I want us to read from verse 2 to verse number 3. The Bible reads, 
Where is the new born king of the Jews? Herod was called the king of the Jews because of Jesus was born. Where is the new born king of the Jews? We saw his star as it rose and we have come to worship him. King Herod was deeply disturbed. <laughs> oh, people will be disturbed by the miracle that you're about to receive. People will be disturbed about the car that you're about to, 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 to buy. People will be disturbed about the house that we're about to buy or what you're about to buy. People are about to be disturbed about how Christian Life Center will become great in the name of Jesus. It is not called Christian Life Center Global Ministry for nothing. God said it. God has declared it. So shall it be in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. I repeat again, the man of God said Christian Life Center will be one of the most beautiful buildings in Campton Park. So I decree and declare and stand upon that word and I stand with my father and the servant of God that I work with in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. The other person on the scene who was also totally disturbed, we were, he was confused of what, of what was going to happen, was Zachariah. Zachariah, in the book of Luke chapter 1, verse 11 to 13, Oh, thank you, Jesus. Luke chapter 1. The book of Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 1. Verse 11 to 13. Oh, Ramasekish. While Zachariah was in the sanctuary, while you and me were in the church, an angel of the Lord appeared to him, standing to the right of the incense altar. Zechariah was shaken and overwhelmed with fear. Hallelujah. With fear. He was overwhelmed with fear when he saw him. But the angel said, do not be afraid, Zachariah. God has heard your prayer. Your wife, Elizabeth, will give you a son, and you are to name him John. John is the one, John the Baptist, the one who baptized Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we see these four things that people were scared of. Fear came upon them. But now, I'm going to give you four quick points that will replace your fear. <laughs> These four important little things that will replace your fear in your life. My brother, my sister, if you just follow this four simple instruction, read the word of God. Number one, surrender. Surrender in my life completely to God every day. Surrendering my life completely to God every day. My brother, my sister, surrender your life completely to God every day in the name of Jesus. Luke chapter 1, verse 38. 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 Surrendering your life completely to God every day. The Bible reads, Mary responded, I am Lord, I am the Lord's servant. May everything you have said about me come true. And, and then the angel left her. May the angel leave you because you are surrendering your life completely to God. That is the first key to replace fear in your life. Because when God is with you, who can be against you? 
no one can be against you. Our father taught us on Sunday, who, what can separate you from the love of God? Nothing can distress, can, can worry, can COVID-19, nothing, nothing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Job chapter 11, verse 13 to 18. You can read it in your own time. Job chapter 11, verse 13 to 18. Job chapter 11, verse 13 to 18. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Number two, stop listening to the voices of fear. Listening to the voices of fear. Media, TV, what do you listen to? People with fear, when the children of God were sent to spy on the land, they were so scared. They brought a, they brought a negative message to the people. We saw the Ammonites intimidated by voices. Who do you listen to? Which voice do you listen to? Listen to the voice of God. The voice of God says that, Greater is he who is in you than he who is in the world. My brother, my sister, I pray that you will stand in the word of God. I pray that the anointing of God will be upon you. Ezekiel was sent into the dry valley, but the hand of God was upon him. I love Elijah. I love Elijah. I love preaching about Elijah. I love talking about Elijah. Elijah went to pray, to, to fight against the prophets of Baal. 400 of them against one man. He did not fear any evil. He did not listen to the voices that they were listening to. He listened to the voice of God. He, he listened to the instructions of God. Who are you listening to, my brother, my sister? Oh, Romans chapter 14, verse 23. Romans chapter 8. Sorry, Romans chapter 14. Romans chapter 14, verse 23. Romans chapter 14, verse 23. The Bible reads in verse 23. But if you have doubts, about whether or not you should eat something you are sinning. If you go ahead and do it, for you are not following your convictions. If you do anything you believe is not right, you are sinning. That is the word of God. What are you listening to? What voices are you listening to? What are you listening to? Oh, COVID-19 has increased in Johannesburg. The numbers have escalated, whatever that language means. They, they have increased, increased, increased. I think that's the simplest term. They have increased. Don't listen to those voices. Listen to what God is saying. The man of God always says, we are approaching Christmas time. Oh, the government, has, they are going to say, we, are, we, we, are, we, we expect oh, 14,000, 19,000 people to die. God forbid, we are children of the most high God. We cancel every spirit of death because the Bible says whatever you speak on earth, whatever you bind on earth, it is bound in heaven. Whatever you lose on earth, it is lost in heaven. We cancel every spirit of premature death, every spirit of accident. We cover everyone in the blood of Jesus. Turn away from TV. Turn away from negative people. People with fear. Move away from such people. Move away from such people. Never neglect the fellowship of fellow brethren. Someone who will sharpen you. Someone who will sharpen you. I was listening to Pastor David's message. He said, <laughs> you know, the foolish <laughs> women went to, they didn't have oil. They didn't have oil. But the clever one had oil. Who are you? Where are we going to put you? Where am I going to put myself? Am I listening to God? Listen to what God is saying. My brother, my sister. I pray that the anointing of God will convict you not to listen to evil people. Not to listen to the voices 
that speak evil against our lives, that speak evil against the men of God, that speak evil against the children of God. Don't be scared. Don't be intimidated by anything. Point number three. Fill my mind with music that praises God. Fill my mind with music that praises God. <laughs> oh, you know, just a, a short testimony. You know, I, I remember when my, my daughter, our daughter was on crutches and it was a day of worship, praise and worship at church. You know, she dropped the crutches on the chair. She lifted the hands and started worshiping God and the tears were flowing. I started crying as well. God started ministering to me without knowing God was ministering to my daughter. From that very moment, we never saw her using crutches again. Jesus is Lord. God is almighty. God is almighty. Fill my mind with music that praises God. Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 1. Verse 46. Luke chapter 1. Oh, Rabbi. Luke chapter 1. Verse 46. From what, verse 46. Verse 46. From verse 46 to verse 57, Mary responding, Mary responding, he said, she said, Oh, how my soul praises the Lord. How my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. For the Almighty One is holy, and He has done great things for me. God is about to do great things for you, my brother and my sister. Hallelujah. He shows mercy from generation to generation. Our Father was teaching us about cases, that cases operate from generation to generation. The case, your, the case over your life is broken in the name of Jesus. The case is broken in my family, in the Hara family, in my wife's family, in the name of Jesus. The case is broken upon each and everyone listening to the sound of my voice in the mighty name of Jesus. From generation to generation. For the mighty one is holy and he has done great things for me. He shows mercy from generation to generation to all who fear him. His mighty arm has done tremendous things. He has scattered the proud and hot ones. He has brought down princesses from their thrones and exhorted the humble. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away with empty hands. He has helped his servant Israel and remembered to be merciful. For he made his promise to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his children. We are Abraham's seed. You are Abraham's seed. God is about to do something for you and for me and your children in the name of Jesus. Mary stayed, stayed with Elizabeth about three months and then went back to her own home. The last thing that we need to do before I pray and close the service, base my hope on the promises of God. Base my hope on the promises of God. Base my hope on the promises of God. Luke chapter 1, verse 45. Luke chapter 1, verse 45. You are blessed because you believed that the Lord 
would do what he said. Do you believe that God is about to do that thing that he promised to you, that you have that car, that that land that you put your feet on, you will possess it. That that house that you went to check, that you went to see, it is yours in the name of Jesus. Psalm, as I conclude, Psalm chapter 56. Psalm chapter 56, verse 3 and 4. Verse 3 and 4. Psalm 56, verse 3 and 4. But when I am afraid, I will put my trust in you. Verse 4. I praise God for what he has promised. I trust in God. So why should I be afraid? What can mere mortals do to me? My brother, my sister, wherever you are, I want you to lift your hand. Just lift your hands wherever you are because God is doing something. As I stretch my hands, I ask of the Holy Spirit, the anointing of God, to begin to break every spirit of fear upon your life, to replace every spirit of fear with praise, to replace every spirit of fear by your promises and by your words. Father, tonight I speak the word of God that the anointing of God will break every yoke, will break every burden, every spirit of worry, every spirit of inadequacy, every spirit of fear that the devil is using against you, that you shall not conceive, that you shall not get married, that you shall die poor. Today I cancel it in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare in the name of Jesus that sickness, oh, that sickness, that sickness, they said that you will not be healed, that you will not be cured of that sickness, be it coronavirus, be it HIV, be it cancer, be, be it whatever the name, high blood pressure, low blood pressure. Oh, by the blood of Jesus Christ, God, by the word of Jesus Christ, the Bible says you send your word and your word heals us and delivers us from every distraction. Lord, may you deliver us from every distraction by the anointing of the word of God. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. The same way that you are that you are with the circle in the valley of dry bones. The Bible says they were very dry. Oh, but they came to life. May something, may something come to life upon your life. My brother, my sister, receive the grace, receive the anointing to break the yoke, to break the altar of God, that spirit of dry bones in your life. Oh, Father God Almighty, every dry bone in your finances, I declare it's coming to life tonight in the name of Jesus. My sister, you are believing for the fruit of the womb. Touch your womb right now. Touch your womb right now. They are saying that you shall not conceive. Oh, touch your womb and say, I shall deliver. The same way that Hannah delivered, I shall deliver in the name of Jesus Christ. The same way that the Spirit of God came upon Mary and Elizabeth, it shall come upon you in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. I speak the word. The word heals you. May the word heal you from that HIV, from that cancer, from that leukemia. In the name of Jesus Christ, they say that, that you shall not make it. You will make it in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you. I bless you. I worship you. I reverence you. Father, thank you. You gave me the word. I have spoken the word without fear because you have never, you have not given me the spirit of fear, but you have given me the spirit of boldness and of a sound mind. I transfer and release that anointing upon your people to have that spirit of boldness upon them. My children shall fear nothing. My wife shall fear nothing. Our ministry shall fear nothing. We shall not be intimidated by anything. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray with thanksgiving in my heart. Receive the grace. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray.
Oh, thank you so much. Bless you, Jesus' name.